Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Theatre Professor Vidcast. My name's Terry Dana Jakimiak II and I am the Theatre Professor. <laughs> This week we are continuing our exploration of Autodesk's sketchbook for the desktop, and hopefully we're having fun. But if you're not, may I suggest a large amount of caffeine before we discover how to use the Select Tool. Ooh, the Select Tool. Now some people call it the Marching Ants, and you'll understand why if you've never used a Select Tool before, because it looks like little itty bitty ants marching in squares and circles around the screen. It's a select tool. Selecting things. Make sure you stop by www.thetheaterprofessor.com. There you can find all my videos, blog posts, and podcasts. And if you're interested, sign up for the free bronze membership so that you can post in our forums. Because why? I like seeing your art. And it's always nice to share things with other people. Or at least that's what I tell my children, even though they don't share anything. Ever. But I still love them. Grab your stylus and your tablet, attempt not to hit somebody across the head with it, and let's get started. All right, here we are once again in Autodesk Sketchbook, and this week we are going to study the Select Tool. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Select Tool should not be used at home, only on a properly equipped computer should you play with the Select Tool. I'm feeling really good tonight, so you'll have to bear with the goofiness. But along with the goofiness, hopefully you'll learn something. All right, so what is the Select Tool? Well, if you've ever used Photoshop or any other type of photo manipulation program, the Select Tool essentially selects things in an image. So I've brought up an image. You can see this beautiful sunset that's going down over the trees. This is actually the view from my front porch looking up towards a house and a street and a tree. I know, it's deep. And we're going to use it to select things because, well, that's what the Select Tool does. So where is the Select Tool? The Select Tool is right up here. Whoa! Apparently I have a Java update. We'll click Yes on that and come back to here. So you'll see the Select Tool is right here. We're going to click on that Select Tool, and you'll see there's a variety of things to look at. We're going to go through them as quick as possible and hopefully learn a bit. So the first thing you'll notice is first subsection here. You've got your rectangle select tool, your oval select tool, your lasso select tool. Hi -yo I don't even know what that means. The polyline select tool, you've got your magic wand for those magical days. These different select tools do different things. Let's start with the rectangle. The rectangle, as you suspect, creates a rectangular selection area. Now, you notice the little dotted line, it's like ants. They're chasing after each other. They're like they're doing a Congo line in a square shape. So what happens with the select tool is everything with in the center, I can do things to, but everything outside, I can't touch. So if I were to grab the eraser and try to erase out here, nothing happens. But as soon as I go in here, I'm not on the eraser. Oh, yes, I, I'm on a, I guess I am on an eraser. It's an eraser that erases blue. Um, oh, I have a blue square underneath. That's why. And so you can erase, you can manipulate, you can do whatever you want within the select tool, all right? And the two most common are the rectangle here that we have, and I'm gonna undo that, and of course the circle or oval that we see here. A little trick on this is if you hold the shift button while you're making it, it will keep it regular, meaning, see how it's a regular circle? If you don't hold the shift, you can get ovals and things, and the same thing happens with your rectangle no shift, I get squares, rectangles, all sorts of things. Soon as I hold shift, all sides are equal. Okay, so just a, just a little trick for you. So as I was saying, the oval creates oval selections. Let's come up here and let's, uh, let's go ahead and erase it because I'm wacky. Oh my gosh, someone is destroying that house. And there we go. We have a selection that's been erased, okay? 
We'll undo that. And let's look at the really nifty selection tools up here. We have the lasso tool. Now what the lasso tool does is it's going to allow us to essentially freehand our selection. So if I click on the lasso tool and I can draw around things. Now, the cool thing the cool thing about the lasso tool here is that it shows you essentially where you're lassoing. If I zoom, oops, I don't want to move a little bit and zoom in. Oops, I'll undo that one. And there we go. We begin this lasso effect. Now something goofy's going on right now. There we go. And then of course you can move your selection around afterwards. Okay. Our next one is this polyline. And what the polyline does is you actually just click points. Now notice all my points are straight. So I've selected that area. Okay. And then you have the magic wand. And magic wand is extremely powerful. If, uh, if you click on it and you click an area, it'll click areas that are alike to that. So let's do it here. It's clicking all of the brown that is similar to the browns that I select. So you can see how I'm doing that. Now you can adjust what's called the tolerance. So if I take my tolerance down to one, oops, and I click, see how very little is selected? If I take my tolerance up to, say, 58, see how much more is selected? So essentially what the tolerance does is if your tolerance is 1 and you pick a point on your picture, it'll really only look for that color, no other colors. If your tolerance is, say, 58, it's going to look for that color and essentially within 58 steps of that color. Okay, if we were to move it up, say to 131, and you can see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see, I've selected pretty much the whole tree. So if we hit the delete button, you'll see, oh, there's that, that, that purple square in the middle of the previous layer. I should probably get rid of that. I'm not going to right now, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, you know what I can do? I can turn off that layer. Oh, there you go, Terry, thinking and stuff. So <laughs> let's, oy vey, let's bring up my layers real quick. We'll turn off that layer. There we go. We'll close the layer box for now because we don't really need to see it. And now if I delete, you can see, you can see what's left is a lot of the non-brown colors. If we come up here, for example, let's get the snow. We can delete a bunch of the snow. Over here, the same thing. Now, notice that it has to be touching each other. You see how that took two? So, somewhere in here, when I press here, everything that is within the select area is connected in some way. Over here, all of that area is connected in some way. And it goes like that the whole way through. So, if it's not connected, if you can't reach it, uh, if you can't reach it somehow, then it's not going to. It's not going to add it to the selection. So say you have, for example, you've got all this snow on the bottom and you want to select it all. Well, up here, you'll see that currently I'm on replace. So when I select air, this area, it replaces what was selected over here. If I select this area, it replaces what was selected over here. If I go in and click the add and now click this area, now both of the snowy sections have been co collected. And I can keep doing that and collect all of the snowy sections as I go along here. I can also remove sections. So if I click the remove, let's remove this. Now I'm removing sections. You see that? Now, you can do the add a selection, add sections merely by using a shortcut key. So if I select this area and then I hold shift and I select this area, now you see I've selected two areas. 
On the other hand, if I hold Alt, I can deselect. So you don't have to continuously come up to this bar up here. You can easily leave yourself on Replace, and you can add and subtract areas as you deem fit. Okay, And that's the same for all of these. So whether it's Lasso, whether it's Polyline, whether it's Oval, or whether, whether it's Rectangle, you, you can use those shortcut keys to do it much quicker than if you come up here and you click on these different selections. All right. The other thing is you can actually invert what's selected. So if I come down here, I'm going to deselect. The shortcut key for deselecting is Control-D. Or if you're on a Mac, it's probably something else like uh, Command D. So for example, I'm going to select the tree. But what I want is I want everything but the tree selected. So if I come up here and click the invert, now everything but the tree is selected. And it leaves my tree selection and some other things that have been selected because of their of similar value. And I'm up near 131 is my selection process. OK? so. That is a good, easy, quick way to get the opposite selection of what you've actually selected. Finally, you can either sample one or sample all layers. So if this is a layered image, you could easily sample just from the layer you're working on. Or if this is not a layered image, then what you would be doing, well, then it's all irrelevant. So I'm not even going to talk about that. <laughs> So you're either going to sample one or all layers. Right now, this is all one layer, so it, it's irrelevant of what I choose there. I can either sample one or sample all layers, and the exact same things are going to happen. Okay, So that's a quick look at the selection tools here in Autodesk. Extremely powerful. Uh, you know, You bring up any type of picture, and you can very quickly select things. A couple of reminders I want to tell you again. So you have some shortcut tools. When you're selecting and you hold Shift, you're adding to the selection. When you're selecting and you hold Alt, you're removing the selection. When you're selecting, or well, when you want to deselect, you can do Control D. Okay. And that is it for this week. I want you to continue to, uh, you know, if you, if you have questions, continue to post them in the comments or stop by the website, www.thetheaterprofessor.com. Leave me a comment in the feedback there. Love to hear from you. Uh, we'll be continuing on the Autodesk Sketchbook series at least for probably another month because there's still a lot that I can cover in this project. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you check out our Procreate tutorials and our uh, Art Rage tutorials. Those are our two big ones. And of course, we have art apps for the iPad. I do a lot of different tutorials there. So you'll, you'll see links popping up somewhere on the screen right now saying, go here or go here or visit this place. So make sure you check those out. And of course, if you haven't done so already, subscribe. And if you completely hate everything that I do, you can, of course, hit the dislike button. Please don't do that. It makes me sad. Millions of kittens die that way. And, and just maybe I'll, I'll send the doctor after you. I'm just saying that I, I know him personally. We go way back. Yeah. All right. That's it for this week. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the theater professor.